In my class at the university, I have first wave students, brilliant first wave students. Okay. And I took the race to equity report to them. And I said, I was invited to do this work with the Urban League. I want to invite you onto the stage too. We have to get the younger generation involved in this. Because they are the ones, the younger generation, they are the ones that will take our backwardness and our brokenness and our chaos and our I don't know how to fix this thing. They will take it onto their backs and carry it forward. So I prompted them. I prompted them to put forth some messages full of their fire. I said, write to the mothers who are losing their sons in these cages, and those mothers cannot find the key. I prompted them, I said, write to those who do not believe that the cage even exists. Miriam, Samantha, Amina, message to the mothers, speak, speak, speak. Mothers, we see, we see, we see, we see that the cage has taken him away from you, your sons, your brothers, your children's fathers. We speak for you with fire on our tongues. Mothers' hands aching to caress forehead, forced to accept empty of their son's absence. Everyone is scared of raising a black boy. How he is one bullet away from being a hashtag. I cannot imagine how sleeplessness has taken you kept you up at night wondering how much of you remains a mother when child is too hungry, or too poor, or too locked up, or too far below the pavement to be considered more than just a number. You see how everyone wants to be like him but not look like him, of how magical his hands are, how cops see a gun in those hands from just a brush, or wallet, or ID, or his palms, his hands up are not enough. Mother's eyes aging from watching their seeds so carefully cultivated, prematurely cut, clipped like weeds. The need for salvation is thick. A rosary beads cannot account for so many lives lost to walls and bars and streets, makeshift graveyards. The moon has hosted many a night of tired souls wrapped in exhausted prayers. Gospel hymns need new updates. Jesus Christo is no longer the only son that has been sacrificed. Blood has dripped from crowns of presumed social predisposition. Mothers no longer marry. Mothers carry tears and palms pressed for prayers. Prayers pressed in palms like secrets. Prayers the only thing that these hands have the strength to carry. Prayers tucked into the whistling corners of wombs that ache too loudly from nostalgia of a time when their occupants were more than human before the tide swept us away with the wreckage of sin and called it collateral. Prayers left unanswered. Prayers buried somewhere deep beneath where I stand. Because see, mothers never rest, even when God does. They say we become a product of our own undoing. We say Madison has become a makeshift Nazareth, crucifying progress. Mothers forever fearing the rising of their fallen sons. The tide has left you divided from your kin, waiting for black bodies to wash up into your arms and stay there in your arms. In your arms. In your arms. A feeling lost for so long, it's almost foreign. They have been caged. They're no longer in our arms. We will reach for them with you. We will melt those bars. We will bring them back. Jali. Obasi, speak, speak. We glue together shards of war torn self esteem. Can you really not see the pain swallowing us whole? I've heard you through the vile cloud of character enclosed in your caption, decomposing pride to primal. Our mother's wombs aren't kilns. We are not glass. Some nights, I've dreamt I was a bird. Most mornings, I wake up in his cage, surrounded by people who don't see me dying. Slowly, as if each tick on the clock were an hour. In an hour, I will be no closer to open air than I am now. Have you ever been trapped in your own smile, branded by your belt line, 
Scraped off a porch, killed on a playground, killed in a textbook, hidden in a textbook, not given a textbook. To most, I am ghost. And I don't know if they can't see my soul they burning. They can't see my soul. Or if they don't want to. Or if they don't want to. But I'm melting nonetheless. Do you even remember the bourbon? How it steamed your flesh to a fight you drank an ocean by night. Engulfed a village hall to the blurriest of eyes. We, we know what you're, you're getting at. And I offer no peace in our crossings. You burned that bridge long ago. I can smell my roasting spirit wafting on the passing breeze. See my ancestors dangling from branches like auburn leaves at autumn's peak. Hear the righteous screams and chants of my grandmother as she marched through Jim Crow infested soil for equality. And the battle cries of my grandfather as he marched through blood bathed jungles for citizenship. Crammed into cages for centuries, unequal and subhuman. Behind the rusted wire fence, I found the whisk car. And I thought about how many meals could be on it, how long it would take daddy to reach her, who would lend a hand if we hung with our demons, who would reach us, who would call, how long would she shake and rattle in hunger like a black boy bird, but she'll probably eat before me tonight. As my ribs fold like praying hands, I ask you, and I'm not ready to be the first to tell you this, but yes, I've heard you. There is no room for not believing the cage exists in my hood. Our reality is bullet shells and hollow Dorito bags littering godmother's front lawn. Black carcasses dropping the pavement down the street. Crack fiends selling their soul for artificial gold on pothole written concrete. There is nothing concrete in this reality but suffering. And no one suffers here but those of brittle bones who bear the skin of shadows. And even our shadows are afraid to break this cycle. And cycles, like bones, don't break unless we force them to. Force the cage to break. <laughs>